chapter 2 is all about simple strain or also known as the unit deformation. On this chapter, we will be dealing with deformation or elongation of materials that is when a force is applied to them, there is a change in the length or in shape until failure of that specimen will take place. So I have here a stress and strain diagram on which it shows the stages experienced by our specimen until it reached its failure. But before that, let me discuss to you first what is strain. So I already uploaded the module for this chapter. So kindly download it from our MVLE. So strain is defined as the amount of deformation experienced by the body in the direction of the force applied divided by the initial dimensions of the body. So for example, we have a bar here with a certain length and a force is being applied to it. So let us take force P and then the length. And then pag na-apply na yung uh, load natin, there is a change in uh, length or there is a deformation or elongation. And and tong elongation na to is uh, defined as our delta. Therefore, our strain is equal to the ratio of the delta all over the original length. So again, strain is equal to the total elongation delta all over the original length. The strain, however, measures only the average value of strain. So the correct expression for strain at any position is defined by the differential elongation all over the differential length. The equation here determines the average strain in a length that is so small that the strain must be constant over that length. And we have certain conditions that must be considered in considering the above or this equation. So number one, the specimen must be of constant cross-section. The cross-section must be constant the entire length. Number two, material must be homogeneous, meaning the material must be the same at the entire length. So the material And then, the third one, the load must be in axial or produce uniform stress. So, our load must be in axial, so can be in tension or in compression. So, as long as it is in axial load. So, our strain is commonly expressed in meter per meter for, in, uh, for SI and inch over inch for um, English system. So our strain is, is meter per meter for SI and then inch over inch or inch per inch when it is in English system. Next is the stress and strain diagram. So Robert Hooke postulated that the stress is proportional to strain and the linear relation between the stress and the strain can be seen in the proportional limit. So by on this point, the stress is no longer proportional to our strain. So the proportional limit is important because all subsequent theory involving the behavior of elastic bodies is based on stress-strain proportionality. So this assumption places an upper limit on the usable stress of the material may carry. It is also an indication that this is the maximum stress to which the material may be subjected and not the ultimate strength. So the proportional limit is the indication that this is the maximum stress to which material may be subjected. So next one is the elastic limit. So the elastic limit, uh, this is the stress by which the material will not turn to its original shape when unloaded but will retain a permanent deformation called permanent set. So, so, in other words, the material will not go back to its original shape. Kung hindi na babalik sa original na shape niya, 
even yung uh, load natin is natanggal na. So, there is what you call a permanent deformation dito sa elastic limit natin. So, again, sa elastic limit natin, hindi na babalik yung original length ng material natin kahit pati nanggal na yung load. Next is the yield point. So, yield point, this is the point at which there is an appreciable elongation or yielding of the material without any corresponding increase of load. So, there, even there is no increase of load, there is still an appreciable elongation or yielding of material. So, kahit hindi na natin ina-applyan ng load, there is still a continuous change of length ng ating material. So, kahit na walang load or dinikris natin yung load na naka-apply, continuous pa rin yung elongation ng ating material. However, this is peculiar to steel. Other grades of steel and steel alloys or other materials do not possess. So, there is, here is a graph for the comparative stress over strain diagram of different materials. So for concrete, aluminum, cast iron, and high carbon steel. So, it only shows the comparative stress strain diagram of different materials. Next is the yield uh, strength. So, the yield strength Uh, the yield strength can only be visible for materials that do not have a well-defined yield point. The yield strength is determined by the offset method. So we have what we call the offset method. So this consists of drawing a parallel line to the initial tangent of the stress strain curve. So for example, we have here our stress and strain curve. And then the offset tayo ng uh, 2% percent are 0.2% percent or 0, 0 0.2 inch per inch or 0 0.002 meter per meter that is uh, usually arbitrary offset. So the intersection of this line with the stress and strain curve is called our yield strength. So we have here our stress and strain curve and then nagdraw tayo ng line that is 0.2% offset to the tangent of this curved line. And when the straight line uh, crosses the stress and strain curve, ito na yung tinatawag natin na yield strength. And this is only visible to the materials that do not have a well-defined yield point. Next. Is the ultimate strength or the ultimate stress. So the ultimate stress is the highest ordinate of the stress and strain curve. So this is the highest ordinate, the ultimate strength. Next is the rupture strength or this is the stress at failure or the breaking strength. Next in line is the Hooke's law. So in the Hooke's law, we have the axial and the shearing deformation in which our modulus of elasticity is equal to the ratio or the proportion of stress all over the strain. So in which our stress is equal to the modulus of elasticity multiplied by the strain. And this is what we call the Hooke's law or called as the Hooke's law. We know that our stress is equal to the force applied divided by the cross-sectional area. And our strain is equal to the uh, total elongation or deformation all over the original length. So, substituting this formula, so we have load all over the area is equal to the modulus of elasticity multiplied by the deformation all over the length. So, we have deformation is now equal to the load multiplied by the original length divided by the cross-sectional area multiplied by the modulus of elasticity. Also, we have another formula for a rod or a, for a material that is suspended vertically. So, the total elongation is due to its own weight. 
for example we have here a bar that is uh, being suspended so nagkakaroon ng deformation due to its weight and the deformation is equal to the uh, density multiplied by the gravity multiplied by the square of the length all over twice the modulus of elasticity or we have the mass all over uh, mass multiplied by gravity multiplied by the original length divided by twice of the area multiplied by the modulus of elasticity so this is only applicable of for materials that being suspended vertically due to its weight or elongation due to its weight there is an elongation due to its weight next is the shearing deformation so for the shearing deformation we have here a block of wood and when a shear force is being applied to this wood nagkakaroon ng change in shape so this is the change in shape so kung sa actual deformation natin there is a change in length here in the shearing deformation there is a change in shape in which our shear strain is equal to the shear deformation all over length so yung shear strain natin is the change in angle so ito yung shear strain natin and when hooks is applied shear stress will now be equal to the modulus of elasticity in shear or also called the modulus of rigidity multiplied by the shear strain and the deformation or the deformation or the shear deformation is equal to the applied load multiplied by the length divided by the area in shear multiplied by the modulus of rigidity so this is the important equations for shearing deformation so pwede din na our shear deformation is equal to so if you're familiar with this one this is shear so shear multiplied by length all over g we have also the stiffness or k is equal to the load applied divided by the deformation so stiffness this is the ratio of the steady force acting on an elastic body to the resulting displacement and it has a unit of newton per meter so this is stiffness naman so to further understand this one let us now proceed to our first example so for our first example the following data were recorded during the tensile test of a 40 mm diameter mild steel rod. The gauge length was 50 mm. Plot the stress and strain diagram and determine the following mechanical properties. The proportional limits, the modulus of elasticity, the yield point, the ultimate strength, and the rupture strength. So we have here the load with the respective elongation. So tinabulate ko lang So yan. Our first step is to determine the strain and the stress in which our strain is equal to the elongation divided by the original length and our stress is equal to the load all over the area. So for strain 1, the elongation is 0 and then the length is 50 mm. So the strain 1 is 0. For strain 2, uh, we have 0 0.01 all over 50 so it is equal to 0 0.0002 and then for strain 3 and so on we eh, gawin na lang natin later let us proceed to the stress so for stress 1 our load is 0 and then our area by the way is equal to pi all over 4 the diameter is 14 so the area is equal to one hundred fifty three point ninety four 
for our stress one so divide by 153.94 so zero for stress two the load is uh, 6310 newton all over area is 153.94 So it's equal to 40.99 and then for stress 3 uh, 12,600 all over 153.94 so 81.85 megapascal so doing it until the last part so ito na yun nagawa ko na siya kanina so this would be the stress and stress uh, table or yung strain and stress ng ating material. So here is now our tabulated data for our strain and stress. And our strain is equal to millimeter per millimeter and then yung stress natin is in newton per square millimeter so we are now ready to plot the data so for our x-axis dito mapupunta yung ating strain and then in y-axis dito yung ating stress so i already made the graph for the stress and strain diagram so here it is so the diagram of stress versus the strain and then at this point, nakalagay yung mga uh, corresponding stress. So for letter A, uh, determine the proportional limit. So yung proportional limit, as I have said kanina, doon nag stop yung uh, linear proportion between stress and strain. So kung mapapansin natin dito sa graph, nag end siya at this point. Tama? So... It is equal to 246.20 newton per square millimeter or megapascal. For letter B, the modulus of elasticity in which our modulus of elasticity is equal to our stress all over strain, right? So, our stress at this point is 246.20 and the corresponding strain is 0 0.0012. So, it is equal to um, 205,166.67 newton per square millimeter for letter C the yield point so next at the proportional limit is our yield point so the yield point is equal to uh, 270.24 so at this part ito yung 270.24 so, 270.24. So, as I have discussed earlier, so this is the proportional limit. Tama? Kung babalikan nyo yung graph, proportional limit. And then next to proportional limit, we have the elastic limit, which is at this part, the elastic limit. And next part is the yield point. So, by the way, this is Newton per square millimeter. And then for letter D, the ultimate strength in which yung ultimate strength natin is the peak of the graph so ito yung peak ng ating graph so our ultimate strength is 441.73 newton per square millimeter and for letter e the rupture strength so our rupture strength is equal to 399.51 megapascal so at this part nagkakaroon na ng failure at this point 399.51 mega pascal so for example number two a steel rod having a cross-sectional area of 300 square millimeter and a length of 150 meter is suspended vertically from one end it supports a tensile load of 20 kilonewton at the lower end if the unit mass of steel is 7,850 kg per cubic meter and has a modulus of elasticity of 200 times 10 raised to 3 mega newton per square meter, find the total elongation of the rod. So we have a steel rod that is vertically suspended. 
with a length of 150 meters. It has a cross sectional area of um, area, so it has an area of 300 square millimeter, and it supports a tensile load of 20 kilonewton. So the unit mass of steel is 7,850 kilogram per cubic meter, and the modulus of elasticity is 200 times 10 raised to 3 mega newton per square meter. We will find the total elongation of the rod. So the total elongation of the rod is equal to the elongation due to its weight. So 1 plus the elongation due to the tensile load it supports. So for our deformation 1 due to its uh, weight, it is equal to the density multiplied by the gravity all over twice the modulus of elasticity. So the unit mass of steel is 7,850 kilogram per cubic meter and then the gravity is 9.81 meter per second squared multiplied by square of length so which is 150 squared meter squared and then twice the modulus of elasticity so our modulus of elasticity is 200 times 10 raised to 3 mega so times 10 raised to 6 newton per square meter so kilogram meter per second squared is in newton right so newton newton cancel and then meter squared meter cube so meter na lang siya. and then meter squared so we are left with meters so our deformation one is equal to so it is equal to 4.33 times 10 raised to negative 3 meters but I would like to express it in millimeter so multiply it by 1000 so it would be now be equal to 4.33 millimeters and for the elongation too due to the load being applied so it is equal to um the load multiplied by the length all over area multiplied by the modulus of elasticity so our load is equal to uh, 20 kilonewton so 20 times 10 raised to 3 the length is 150 uh, meters uh, the cross-sectional area so let us express this in millimeters na lang. so 150 uh, times 1000 para maging millimeter the area is a 300 square millimeter and then modulus of elasticity so it is it, this is mega pascal so 200 times 10 raised to 3 newton per square millimeter so our deformation 2 is equal to 50 millimeters therefore the total elongation of the rod is equal to 4.33 millimeters plus 50 millimeters so it is equal to 54.33 millimeters so this would be the total elongation of our rod for our example number three a steel fire 10 millimeter thick of 80 millimeters wide and 1,500 millimeter inside diameter is heated shrunk onto a steel wheel 1,500.5 millimeter in diameter. If the coefficient of static friction is 0 0.3, what torque is required to twist the tire relative to the wheel? Neglect the deformation of the wheel and I use modulus of elasticity of 200 gigapascal. So we have here a steel tire that is 150 millimeters inside diameter. This is 150 millimeters or 1,500 millimeters inside diameter. Sorry. <coughs> and it has a thickness of 10 millimeters. 
and it is fitted shrunk onto a steel wheel that is 1,500.5 mm in diameter. Therefore, the deformation of the tire is equal to <clears throat> pi of 1,500.5 minus pi in circumference 1,500. So, it is equal to 0 0.5 pi. And then, our deformation is PL all over AE, right? The force <coughs> is equal to our tangential force. That if, so for example, I cut the tire sa gitna. So this would be the width of 80 millimeters and then yung thickness niya, which is 10 millimeters. So yung tangential force niya, inabanggit ko, is acting at this part. So T and T. And it has a force um, due to pressure. Let's say this is F. And then our length is equal to the diameter, the original length, which is 1,505 millimeter. And then, yung area natin is equal to 80 multiplied by 10, so 800 square millimeter, so this part. And then, the modulus of elasticity is equal to 200 uh, gigapascal or 200,000 megapascal. So, Taking deformation is equal to PL all over AE. Deformation is 0 0.55 of 0.55 millimeter. Our T is the tangential uh, load, so T. And then the length is equal to 1,500 pi of millimeter. The area natin is 800 square millimeter multiplied by 200,000 newton per square millimeter. Therefore, T is equal to 53,333.33 newton. And then, taking the summation of forces horizontal is equal to zero. So, at this part, F is equal to dt, on which our force due to pressure is equal to uh, the pressure multiplied uh, by the area. So, yung area that is uh, perpendicular at this part, so 1,500, diba? Yung inner diameter, 1,500, and then the length, which is 80. So, it is equal to 2t. Yung t natin is equal to 53,333.33 newton. Therefore, the pressure is equal to 2. So, it is equal to uh, 0 0.89 megapascal. So 0 0.89 megapascal. So, moving now to the steel wheel, taking the forces at the uh, contact pressure, so it is equal to N, multiplied by our pressure, multiplied by the area in contact, so it is equal to 0 0.89, yung area in contact natin is 1,500.5 pi, multiplied by the width, which is 80, so it is equal to 10. So it is equal to 335,633.94 Newton. And in our mechanics or physics, our F is equal to the coefficient of static friction multiplied by the normal force. So, multiply lang natin yung normal force natin with the coefficient of uh, friction, which is 0 0.3. So, it is equal to 0 0.3 multiplied by our N, 335,600.94. 33.94 so our F is equal to 100,690.18 newton and then our torque now so lalagay ko dito our torque now 
is equal to one half of the diameter multiplied by f. It is equal to one half. Our diameter is one thousand five hundred point five all over two. Our f is equal to one hundred thousand six hundred ninety point eighteen. So it is equal to. So it is equal to. 37,771,403.77 newton dot millimeter. So I will just convert it into kilo newton dot meter. It would be equal to 37.77 kilo newton dot meter. Therefore, this is the torque that is required to twist the tire with relative to the wheel. So this would be the final answer. For problem number four, a bronze bar is fastened between a steel bar and an aluminum bar as shown. Actual loads are applied at the positions indicated. Find the largest value of B that will not exceed an overall deformation of 3 mm or for the following stresses. 140 megapascal for steel, 120 megapascal in bronze, 80 megapascal in the aluminum. And assume that the assembly is suitably braced to prevent buckling. And here is the modulus of elasticity for the following. For steel, 200 gigapascal. For aluminum, 70 gigapascal. And for bronze, 83 gigapascal. So our first step is to pass an imaginary line at every uh, bar. So for steel, Taking the summation of forces horizontal is equal to zero. So our PS is equal to P. Therefore, our stress, our stress is 140 megapascal. So PS all over AS. So 140 megapascal is equal to PS our P. And then our area for steel is 480 square millimeter. Therefore, our P here is equal to. So it is equal to 67,200 newton or 67.2 kilo newton. And for the second one, uh, repeating the same procedure, have here P, 3P, so this would be P, B. So taking the summation of forces horizontal is equal to zero. So negative P, B minus P plus 3P is equal to zero. So our PB is equal to 2P. So we stress at B is equal to our force in B all over area in B. Our area in B or our stress in bronze is equal to 120 megapascal. So our force is equal to 2P. And the area in bronze is 650 square millimeter. Therefore our P here is equal to it is equal to 39,000 newton or 39 kilo newton. And for the last part, same procedure again. This is PA. Oh, by the way, uh, this is in tension. This one is in compression. Okay, so taking the summation of forces horizontal is equal to zero. So negative P plus 3P minus 4P plus PA is equal to zero. Therefore, our load at A is equal to is equal to 2P. Therefore, taking the stresses or stress at the aluminum is equal to PA all over AA. So it is equal to so it is equal to 80 newton per square millimeter and our PA is 2P and then area is 320 square millimeter. So for our P here is equal to 12,800 newton or 12.8 kilo newton in tension. So it is stated here that the overall deformation is 3 millimeters. So the overall deformation is equal to 3.0 millimeter in which our total deformation is equal to the deformation of 1 plus deformation of 2 plus deformation 
part of the RD formation from steel, from bronze, and from aluminum. So, 3 millimeters. Our deformation is equal to PL all over AE. So, for the steel, our P is equal to P multiplied by the length, so 1000 millimeter, divided by the area which is 480 square millimeter and then the modulus of elasticity is 200,000 newton per square millimeter plus or minus I should say because it is in compression so minus 2t multiplied by 2000 millimeter all over um, the area is 650 and then the modulus of elasticity for aluminum is 70,000 megapascal. Plus, for our aluminum, this is equal to 2p multiplied by 1,500 square millimeter. So the length is 1.5 meter. And then this is equal to um, the area is 320. And then the modulus of elasticity is equal to 83,000 newton per square millimeter. Therefore, our P is equal to, so solving simultaneously, so it is equal to 84,610 or 84.61 kN. Therefore, we have four values of P. Therefore, the safest load that can be applied to this um, fastened bar is equal to 12.8 kilo newton. So this would be our final answer. For our example number 5, the rigid bar AB attached to two vertical rods as shown is horizontal before the load P is applied. Determine the vertical moment of P if its magnitude is 50 kilo newton. So our first step is to draw the free body diagram. So we have here the point B, which is 100, which is 50 kN. And then we have a rod, a steel rod, and an aluminum rod. <coughs> The moment at A is equal to 0. So negative PS multiplied by 6 plus 50 of 3.5 meters is equal to 0. Therefore, our load at steel is equal to 29.17 kN. And then taking the solution of force is vertical is equal to zero. So PS plus PA minus 50 is equal to zero. So 29.17 plus PA minus 50. Therefore, our PA or our tensile load of aluminum is equal to 20.83. So for the deformation at aluminum is equal to PA over A. <laughs> so the load at A is equal to 20.83 kN or 20.83 times 10 raised to 3 newton. The length is at 3 meters or 3,000 millimeters. And then the cross-sectional area is equal to 500 square millimeter. And then the modulus of elasticity is equal to 70 gigapascal or 70,000 newton per square millimeter. Therefore, our deformation at A is equal to 1.79 so millimeter. And for deformation at the steel, So our tensile load is equal to 20.83 kN or 
Oh, sorry. 29.17 kN. So, it is equal to 29.17 kN times 10 raised to 3 multiplied by the length which is 4,000 millimeters all over 1,500 square millimeter and then the modulus of elasticity is equal to 200,000 newton per square millimeter. Therefore, the deformation <coughs> for steel is equal to So it is equal to 1.94 millimeters. 1.94 millimeters. <clears throat> so the problem has the vertical movement of P. Or the vertical movement at point B. So our next step is to draw the deformation or the movement of the bar. So ito yung original na setup ng ating bar. So nagkaroon ng elongation of 1.79 mm ang ating steel and then ang ating aluminum rather and then our steel has a, def has a deformation of 1.94 mm. So i-exaggerate lang natin yung deformation na nangyari sa aluminum and steel. So let's say this is uh, yung 1.79 na deformation. So umabot siya ng 1.72 9 millimeters and then yung steel natin is 1.94 millimeters. Kaya yung bar natin nagkaroon ng movement. So ito na yung bar natin. At which ito yung point B. So ang tinatanong niya is the uh, vertical movement ng ating bar. So from point from the original position to the final position. So, ito yun. So, let's say this is the movement at B or Y, B. So, by ratio and proportion, by ratio and proportion, let's make a triangle here. How much this is? 2,500 millimeters and this is uh, 3,500 millimeters. By the way, can invert ko lang to. And this one, 1.94 minus 1.79 is equal to 0.15 millimeters. So, this one is 0.15 millimeters. So, by ratio and proportion, 3,500 plus 2,500 all over 0.15 millimeters is equal to 3,500 all over. So, let's say this is um, x. So, x. So, our x now be equal to 0 0.0875 millimeters. Therefore, the total movement YB is equal to 1.79 millimeters plus 0 0.0875 millimeters. So, it will now be equal to 1.88 millimeters. So, this would be our final answer.